So the first one is quick fire players. So it's uh, Blades players that have played under you or or when you were at Bramall Lane. And we just want to hear a, a quick snippet about them. So first up, Rob Kosluck is the, always the first person that we always ask about. Joker, one of the funniest people you will ever meet. You need someone like Rob Kosluck in your dressing room. And I know um, that when he was there, he had a big role to play, uh, even if he didn't play as often as he would have liked. But what a great lad. Massive respect. And uh, as I say, he was the one. He was the gel in the in the, in the dressing room. Brilliant. I can't speak highly enough of him. Lee Hendry. Disappointment. Not because of Lee, because when I came, I was so excited to think that I'd got Lee Hendry. And he suffered injury after injury after injury. And I, I think he might have just about got in, uh, fit for the final. I think I put him on the bench for the final. But so disappointed that Lee, ne- you know, I mean, I look back at all the things that he used to do and be able to do. And I thought, brilliant. That's exactly what I'm looking for from the midfield player. And, you know, an eye for the goal, box to box. And he had terrible trouble with his calves, serious trouble with his calves. And, and, I remember saying Dennis Pettit, the physio, you know, when am I going to ever get him? And, and Dennis was saying, look, there's nothing we can do. You know, it, one thing led to another. So it was really disappointment from from Lee because I, I never got the Lee Hendry that I really wanted. And that was nothing. It was just, it was injuries. So, but what, but listen, another nice lad as well, by the way, who, who uh, and I know has gone on. Um, and, and, and once again, wow, he had so much personality. We went to uh, Malta to do one of them trips. And uh, I certainly know with Rob Kozlock and Lee Hendry and people like that around, it was always going to be sparky. And believe you me, they had some good times in Malta. The next one, I've got James Beatty down, uh, but we've already spoken a little bit about him. Have you got anything else that you want to say about James? No, I think I've covered it. It was just a, a really good lad, good leader. Once again, Beats had his own, comp- you know, he, he would make comments that, that were relevant, um, but he also led on the pitch. Another good leader on the pitch. And I think when I look back on it, and it's something that maybe you think about now as you're talking to me, you know, I, I look at it there and I had Chris Morgan as a, as a leader on the pitch. I had Speedo when he was on the pitch. Uh, I had James Beatty when he was on the pitch. There was there was quite there was Paddy Kenny when he was on the I had quite a few bloody characters. That's why we were such a hard team to beat. You know what I mean? And people talk about that. You do need people like that. But we were blessed with having quite a few and, and they never knew when they were beaten. And then, you know, the, you had... Little Quinny, who was a right, you know, pain in the arse to people, he never gave up. He never quit. And you added that alongside your morgues and your and, and people like that, um, at your Monty's and whatever. Never gave up. Good characters. Don't see enough in the game like that anymore, now, I'm afraid. Darius Henderson. Darius. Darius, big, strong. Did okay. Then picked up a lot of injuries. Another one who was injured. Um, lost him before the final. I thought it was a big loss before the final um, because we couldn't go into the final. We went in with the other beat, Craig Beatty, I think it was, who, who really wasn't an out-and-out striker. Uh, but Darius um, maybe never fill, fulfilled the potential that he, he could have done uh, at Bramall Lane. Um, but another character, once again, you look at him up top and... He's one that you didn't argue with. He, he physically very strong, fearful. Centre arms were fearful of him, and uh, it, it was. Uh, but still, still a fairly. You know, it, it, we were unfortunate that he picked up serious injuries. Uh, he was out, I think, for a year in one of the injuries. So, yeah, disappointed for for him as well. Loved getting sent off as well, didn't they? Yeah, you watch. If if Darius got that bee in his bonnet, it was very hard to get that bee out. That is for sure, and um, he, 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 yeah, he, he had a bit of a track record like that. But you know, if you're going to go into the championship, you, you've got to have players who've got that physical, mental ta- mentality, and you're going to go to Preston on a wet, cold night. And if you don't stand up to it, you know what I mean? They they will eat you alive. And, and and the likes of Darius Anderson put the fear of God into other people as well. So you know, while he played, it, it made it made it easier for one or two others, but. Yeah, um, there, there are certain things. And I know having spoke to Darius since he's quit the game, that's maybe one of the areas of his game is, is disciplinary that he felt he should have. And I think now he's a mentor to, to other other strikers, believe it or not, he's, as an agent and as, and as a mentor, to not go down the route that he took. 
I think we need to try and get him on, don't we, Hal? Yeah. Uh, and finally, the late and great Hugo Ekiog. I never realised until I had him how good Hugo was. An absolute Rolls Royce. Um, they said his legs had gone when I got there and, and whatever, and, and he, he, he had problems with his calves, but he played for me nearly as much as he could, I think. I, I don't think he missed many games for me as much, you know, and it was only injuries that, that left him out. But once again, look at that. You know, Hugo Ekiov, what a leader he was. Morgan, like I said, I've just I mentioned I forgot about Hugo, you know, but an absolute gentleman, an absolute gentleman, and um, no, nothing but respect. And I learned a lot from him, you know, as a young manager, I learned a lot from him and Speedo, learned a lot from them two guys. And um, I think that's really what's allowed me to move on in the game and still be in the football at, at last at 64. So, you know, listen, I, I wake up every day and real and, and realize how lucky I am to be playing, sorry, involved in the game of football. Till, till my retirement and and you know when I was at school if you'd have said that I, I, I'd have I'd have snapped your hand off and and the fact that you want to speak to me means that at least I've done something right in the game and I know I'm, I do talk sport tomorrow and they want to talk about Sheffield United and talk about Leeds and what other places that I've been at so I, I'd like to think that I've done something right in the game um, but as I say you can't please all the people all the time I'm sure there's other people who'll resent me for whatever I've done in the, t- to them Um and uh, but overall, I've just I'm just so pleased that I've had a decent career. The thing is, Kevin, you have had a fantastic career. You really have. And uh, even Chris Wilder winning two uh, promotions for Sheffield United, he's got some haters um, from the Sheffield United fans anyway. So, like you say, you're never going to please everybody. 